Hey guys. Hi. Oh, it's open stage at all con. I feel so at home here. It's lovely. It's my first convention. There's so many nerds here. I heard the local athletics departments all have to do their own homework this weekend. <laughs> Sucks to be them. Because I don't know about you guys, but I am a proud nerd. I am proud. Yeah. Proud to be a nerd. Yeah. I'm a proud Texas nerd. I love being from Texas. I love Texas. Yeah. I feel like Texas is the drunk uncle the other 49 states secretly hope doesn't show up for Christmas, you know? <laughs> But when he does, he's terrible, but he's so entertaining that no one wants to ask him to leave. That's us. And that makes me giddy. Because it is. It's great. It's great being a nerd. And we're here on uh, Pi Day. 3.14 Pi Day. Although I have to admit, I'm less of a numbers nerd. I'm less a numbers nerd, more of a word nerd. Like, I can recite Romeo and Juliet off the top of my head, but I swear to God, if any of you people here's life depended on me knowing my multiplication tables, you might as well kiss your ass goodbye, because that's just not happening. It is not, and I'm sorry. Thank you. So, but I mean, as much as I love William Shakespeare, I'm a theater student, and I like Romeo and Juliet. As a female lead, Juliet is kind of lacking, okay? If you want a really strong female lead, look at actual history. Like Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc was beast, okay? Yeah. Or as I like to call her, the hipster William Wallace. She was killing Englishmen 200 years before it was cool. She was awesome. And she did, she, she started young too. She was like 16, roaming the countryside, I assume, wearing her favorite underground band t shirt and a comically oversized fake handlebar mustache. I don't know, I wasn't there. But I want to believe. But eventually she goes to Charles VII who is the would-be king of France. And she's like, look, dude, if you give me an army, I will give you the crown to a kingdom so obscure the rest of the world hasn't even heard of it yet. And he's like, okay. <laughs> so he does, and she sacks Orleans and actually reclaims it from that you know, mainstream England. And so she makes him the legitimate king of France. And like all good politicians, he immediately cuts funding. So he's up there in the castle. And he's up there just living the high life, and she's down there on the battlefield with maybe half a dozen men playing ready, set, son of a bitch until she gets captured. <laughs> and they, they take her, and, and they try to get her to sign a confession, but she won't use a quill unless it's made from the feather of a dodo bird. You know how they are, so. But eventually, they, they finally talk her into it, but she's so hardcore, she was like, guys, I was being ironic. And they were like, no, backseas, and they burned her at the stake. So she was pretty cool, but... I have to admit, though, the only thing better than a female knight is my grog-guzzling sisters, the female pirates. Yeah. And we can drink, too. I know this, because you're looking at a girl who once got so drunk she called a cop a pussy to his face. True story. That is not a personal challenge, by the way. The only reason I got away with that is because he was drunker than I was. All right? I am a professional. Kids, don't try that shit at home. But it wasn't all fun and games. I mean, it wasn't all drinking. Actually, the... Arguably most successful pirate of all time was a former prostitute by the name of Madame Ching. See, legend has it that she was so beautiful that the current pirate lord of the time fell madly in love with her and married her and gave her half of his assets. So when he died at a relatively early age, as pirate lords are wont to do, they held a council to see who would take over and she comes in and just Jean Grey's the shit out of the whole thing. <laughs> And is actually extremely good at it. Not only did she live well into her 60s, which was relatively unheard of back then, but she never remarried, raised her children as a single mother, and controlled a pirate fleet of something like 2,000 ships and 4,000 men strong. That is a hardcore mom. I mean, my mom's pretty hardcore too, but I can't speak for all the ladies in the house, but my mom gets worried when I so much as step foot out the door by 7 p.m., you know? <laughs> Like, and I know it's because I'm her daughter, you know, but it, it makes me want to buy a strap on, right? So that way when she's like, you know, she gets worried, I mean, no, it's okay, mom, I have a dick right now, it's fine. It's cool. No, it's fine. I can take it off when I come home, try on dresses, everybody wins, it's fine. Because I don't like dresses, I don't. I mean, I don't mind showing the girls off now and then, but I just, I don't like my nether regions to be exposed to the ground. That's just not how I roll. I just, I prefer trousers. I mean, most female pirates did. Like Anne Bonny, my favorite pirate of all time, Anne Bonny, she, she was pretty much raised in trousers. She, she was the illegitimate daughter of an aristocrat. So she spent most of her childhood pretty much disguised as a boy. She did boys things, raised as a boy. So naturally, when she came of age, she ran away and joined the pirate circus. So 
while she was on her little piratical adventure, she takes a liking to a young man by the name of Sailor Reed. And one thing leads to another one night, and surprise, titties, Sailor Reed. <laughs> Sailor Reed's real name is Mary Reed and had virtually the exact same backstory as her. Illegitimate child raised as a boy, whole nine. So most historians believe that from that point on, the ladies spent the majority of their time hoisting each other's colors, if you know what I'm saying, you know? Yeah, yeah. You get it, it's like comedy. And they were under the command of Captain Calico Jack Rackham, who was just history's douchebag, okay? <laughs> Calico Jack was the guy that wishes he could wish that he was Johnny Depp, because as fate would have it, late one night, while he's below decks with his boys, drinking, smoking, playing cards, they actually get ambushed. And it was pretty much Anne Bonny and Mary Reed against the entire British Navy. So obviously, they get captured. And obviously, as the captain, Calico Jack is sentenced to hang by the neck until he is dead. So they allow Anne Bonny one final time to see him. And this is why she's my favorite thing ever. Because rather than show him sympathy for his cowardly act, she looks him dead in the eyes, and she tells him, my favorite quote, you can look this up. She says, I'm sorry, Jack, but if you'd stayed on deck and fought like a man, you'd need not be hanged like a dog. <laughs> Which, if you don't realize, that's basically pirate code for mic drop and step. <laughs> I mean, that's what she did. Because she was true to herself, and that's the point. That's what this place represents. That is what our message is. That is everything we hold dear. Be you, be who you are, be the best damn you that you can possibly be, no matter what you do, whether you're a, a numbers nerd, a word nerd, a knight or a pirate, be the best you, don't let anyone or anything ever stand in your way. Because even if it feels like you were outnumbered, you were standing on your ship against the entire British Navy, always remember, at the end of the day, if you don't stay on deck and fight like a man, you might as well be hanged like a dog. So that is my time open stage. Thank you all, Colin, and thank you for listening. Let's have a hearty arg for Moon the Pirate.